And I want to thank and praise God for not being a stranger anymore. You know, one day I was a stranger, and the next day I was adopted into the royal family. For one moment, I was in the kingdom of darkness, and I was translated in the next moment into the kingdom of his dear son. I want to thank God that I'm no longer a stranger now. And I thank the Lord tonight for just being good to me. And I thank him for his goodness, and I thank him for his mercy. And you know, being a stranger no longer is goodness and it's mercy. Because I still could have been walking around, bumping around in the world, just walking around, just just almost like in a ping pong machine. And just could have been just not from here to there. And you know, when you're playing ping pong, you know, the ball can just go wherever, all over the ping pong board. And when we were in the world, that's how our lives were likened unto. Just bumped here and bumped there and bumped here and there and wherever direction the wind leadeth us and wherever direction the enemy would take us, we would be tossed to and fro, the Bible calls it. But because I'm no longer a stranger, somebody said I'm no longer a stranger, I have the Lord on my side. And we have a, a recent lesson that says, with God on our side and through it all, somebody said through it all, we will be found standing. With God on my side, somebody said, with God on my side. And through it all, somebody say, through it all. I will be found standing. And you know, God is the father of mercies. And he is the God of all comfort tonight, according to Corinthians. And he is leading and guiding us into all paths of truth tonight. And I want you to be encouraged tonight that judge nothing before the time. And I might as well go to 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Because when it looks like, somebody say, when it looks like, it's all over. God has the final say-so. And when it looks like we're not going to make it, God says, not so. And when it looks like, it seems like it's just not going to work out. And you don't know where this is coming from or where that's coming from. And you may say, well, where is the spirit and all of that? But I will tell you tonight, it's not because I know this or I know that, but it's the spirit of God who blesses. It's the spirit of God who helps us. It's the spirit of God that leads us. It's the spirit of God who guides us. It's the spirit of God who strengthens us. It's the spirit of God who gives us faith to faith and strength to strength and takes us from glory to glory. Because when we don't know which way to go, the Lord is still on our side. When you don't know which way is up and which way is down, God is still on the throne. When you don't know what to pray, the Bible talks about that in the book of Romans, for we know not what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession. He helps our infirmities, because when you don't know what to pray, he helps you. But over in 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, I want to encourage you tonight. Judge nothing before the time. And I'm going to start in verse 1. It says, let a man so account of us as of ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. I want to encourage you tonight that don't let your circumstances Determine your faithfulness. I want to encourage you tonight that regardless of your circumstances, the Bible says, somebody said the Bible says, let a man so account of us. In other words, those are people that are watching us and they're holding us accountable whether they, whether they tell us they're holding us accountable or not. But they are counting on us to be faithful. It says let a man so account of us or hold us accountable as of the ministers of Christ. And you know, you might think within yourself, I don't have the title of a minister. But if you have the word of God within your spirit, if you are carrying the word of God within you, God is able to call on you with any moment and any time. If you have the Holy Ghost and the word of God within you to be a minister of Christ. And because you have the word of God and because you have the Holy Ghost dwelling in your human spirit, let a man so account of you as being faithful. 
and it is required. Somebody say it's required. The word of God says that it is required of stewards that we will be found faithful. And if you are faithful tonight, if you remain standing tonight, if you, no matter what it looks like, sounds like, we've been saying it a lot lately because the Spirit is wanting to impress upon us that if we are faithful, God is faithful. If you are faithful, God is faithful. So Paul was encouraging the saints at Corinth. He said, let a man so account of us. Somebody say us. Somebody say me. That we are the ministers of Christ and that not only so that, but that we are found faithful. Because we are stewards of the word of God. And it says here, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And I'm going to go down to verse 5. It says, therefore, judge nothing before the time. It ain't over till God says it's over. It's not over until the Lord says that it's done. I want you to be encouraged tonight. Don't judge nothing before the time. And that's why the Spirit keeps on telling us it doesn't matter what it looks like, Brother Brooks. It doesn't matter what it feels like, sounds like, seems like, be like. Because in one moment, in a twinkling of an eye, you're going to be changed from mortal to immortality. It may feel like you're going to be in this mortal body forever, but in a moment, somebody says in a moment. It just takes a moment for God to change your situation. It just takes a moment for God to touch. It just takes a moment for God to deliver. It only takes a moment for God to heal. And it's the same way with the Holy Ghost. It only took a moment to change you from being in the kingdom of darkness until the kingdom of his dear son. It only took a moment for him to baptize us in the Holy Ghost. One moment I was sinking deep in sin and the next moment I was speaking in my heavenly language. I want to encourage you tonight, Romans the 8th chapter. Don't judge it before the time. God said it's not over. God said it's not over. God said it's not done. God said that he's moving. God said that don't even think about the fact that you may not have the power because you don't. But God has all power. Romans the 8th chapter in verse 7, 37 says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. And you say, well, what's all these things? All the things up above in verses 34. And I'll start there, actually, for the sake of, of reading into it. It says, who is he that condemneth? You know, the enemy might be telling somebody that maybe if you shouldn't have made this decision, or maybe you shouldn't have made that decision, or maybe you were hasty on this, or maybe you didn't try hard enough on that, or you didn't apply yourself good enough over here, or you didn't do enough over there, or you didn't seek this out, and you didn't do that, and you didn't, 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 didn't. The enemy is the accuser of the brethren. But God is the lifter up of our head. I want to encourage you tonight. The recent outline said, with God on our side and through it all, we will be found standing. Somebody say, I'm standing. I'm standing. And it says here in 34 again, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. In other words, Paul said, I'm going to talk back to the devil tonight. He said, I'm going to tell y'all what the devil been telling you. Because he's been condemning you about something. He's been making you feel bad about this and making you feel bad about that. But who is he that condemneth? He is nobody. Who is he? What power does he have? He only has power that you give him. So who is he? Because when you define the enemy and you give him all this credence in your life, guess what? Then he becomes something. But when you take away the power from him, he is nothing. He is only what you make him. It is Christ that died. In other words, Paul said, I'm not even trying to hear about the devil because it's all about Jesus Christ. Yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God. And the Spirit said, listen to the word of God tonight like you never heard it before. If you want a blessing tonight, no matter how many times you heard this scripture, no matter how many times it's been read to you, no matter how many times you have read it yourself, the Spirit said, listen like you never heard it before. There's a blessing in it for you tonight. 
He says, yea, that is risen again. Somebody say again. Yeah. Who is even at the right hand of God. Somebody say at the right hand of God. Amen. You have to know where your Savior is tonight. You got to know where your help is tonight. You have to know where your intercessor is tonight. He's on the right hand of the Father, ever living. Somebody say ever living. Amen. To make intercession for you. You got to know what's going on in heaven tonight. I'm not worried about nobody's business down here. I'm just worried about what's going on in heaven. The Bible says there's a predetermined council in heaven. I'm concerned if they're talking about me tonight. I need to know that they're on my side tonight. I need to know that they're talking about my situation. My case is before the predetermined council. Your case is before the predetermined council. Your case is before the predetermined council. It's before the general assembly in heaven. The Bible talks about the general assembly. That's how we get the general assembly down here. Our state legislature is called the General Assembly. Somebody was reading the Word of God. So before the predetermined council, which is the General Assembly tonight, your case is before them. It says here then, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us then from the love of Christ? And I start out saying with God on our side and through it all. We will be found standing. So who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Everything that comes your way that is not of God is designed to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. If it's not for you, then it's against you. It says, who shall separate? And you can fill in that blank and say, what shall separate you from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sore, or lack of job, lack of money, lack of resources, lack of this, lack of that. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. In other words, Paul said, I'm going through because I, I'm going through because it's all for y'all's sake. I'm going through so you can see me go through. I'm going through, it's for your sake that I'm going through. I'm going through, and it's also benefiting me when I go through the right way. Because right my faith is getting increased. So when God moves, somebody said, when God moves, God gets the glory. When God moves, God gets all the honor. When God moves, God gets all the praise. Because the scripture said that he ever liveth, talking about Jesus Christ now, to make intercession so God can get all the glory. Amen. He says here, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. In other words, Paul said, I'm going through in front of you day and night, all day long. I'm going through. But it's for your sake. It's to cause your faith to be increased. It's to cause you to know when it's your turn to go through. Yeah. You know how to go through. You know to whom to go to when you go through. You know how to rise up out of your adversity. You know how to rise up out of your situation. You know how to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. You know what to do when tribulation comes your way. He says here, nay, in all these things, we are more than. Somebody say, I'm more than. More than. I'm more than my trial. Somebody say, I'm more than. I'm more than, I'm more than my job. Somebody say, I'm more than. I'm more than my situation. Somebody say I'm more than. I'm more than my distress. Somebody say I'm more than. I'm more than whatever I have or don't have in the bank. I'm more than. I'm more than my house tonight. Say I'm more than. I'm more than the cars I drive. I'm more than. I'm more than those, those colleagues that I have. I'm more than the seat I sit in at the table at corporate. I'm more than. Sometimes the enemy will try to define you. But I want to encourage you tonight with God on your side. And through it all, we will be found standing. The job doesn't define me. Amen. It's good to have a good position in all. Because God will make room for your gift. And he'll sit you before great men. I'm a witness. And he'll sit you in high places. I'm a witness. But I'm more than my job. I'm more than the big title I hold. I'm more than the check I get. I'm more than. Are you more than tonight with God on our side? And through it all, we will be. Somebody said we will be, we will be. found standing. He says here, he says nay. Somebody said nay. nay. You got to say it for the Holy Ghost. Somebody said nay. nay. And all, say it one more time for the Father. Said nay. nay. 
for the son say nay. Nay in all these things. We are more than. Somebody say I'm more than. Conquerors how? Of my own accord. Through my own power. Through my own pushing through. Through my own deliberations. Through my own frustrations. No, he says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. There's only one way. He says, through him, somebody said through him, yeah. that loved us. Somebody say through him, who loved me. Somebody say through him, who shed his blood. Somebody say through him, who died on the cross. Somebody say through him, who went into a bar or tomb. Somebody say through him, who raised after three days and three nights. Somebody said through him, who had a post-resurrection ministry. Says somebody said through him, who went up out of their sight into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. Somebody said through him, whoever liveth to make intercession through him. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than. You got to start telling the devil if you hadn't already. Say, I'm, no, I'm more than. You've been telling me this, and you've been telling me that, but I'm more than that. You've been saying this, and you've been saying that, but I'm more than. You've been talking noise, but I'm more than the noise you're talking. You've been bringing storms, but I'm more than the storms you've been bringing. You've been doing whatever you want to do, but I'm more than that. You've been telling me I can't do this and I can't do that, but I'm more than that. Whatever he tell you you can't, somebody said, whatever he said that I ain't, I'm more than that. Every time he brings something your way, Pastor, you got to say, no, but I'm more than that. Because he will try to talk all kind of noise and junk to you. But we got to start standing up to the enemy. He did that and pulled that number on Job. And he would go to the father and talk to him about Job. And no matter what God let him do to Job, God knew, somebody said God knew, that Job was more than that. He was more than the balls and the sores that he had on his body. He was more than the family that he had that he was so willing to give up. He was more than the herds of cattle he had. He was more than his house. He was more than... Everything that he owned. He was even more than himself because of the Holy Ghost. Because that's who makes you more than. Through Christ Jesus. So with God on our side. And through it all. Somebody said through it all. We will be found standing. For I am persuaded. Paul says I'm persuaded. Somebody say I'm persuaded. I am persuaded. And when you are persuaded about something, you have to be dogmatic about it. When you are persuaded about something, you have to be bullheaded about it. When you are persuaded about something, you can't let nothing turn your eyes to the left or to the right. When you are persuaded about something, your eye have to be single so your body can be full of light like it says in Matthew. When you are persuaded about something, you don't look back. When you are persuaded about something, you are moving forward. When you are persuaded about something, you will keep on praying. When you're persuaded about something, you will keep on fasting. When you're persuaded about something, you will keep on living for God. When you are persuaded about something, you will keep on pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. When you are persuaded. I've been persuaded for 27 years. And it's not because of any greatness of myself. Because there were days when I wanted to just stop. Not go back. Just Tired because the enemy will use a wearing out tactic on you. If you are not careful, you will succumb to that. But the Spirit of the Lord, somebody said, the Spirit of the Lord, He will pick you up. He will cause you to ride on wings of eagles. He'll cause you to run and not be weary. He'll cause you to walk and not faint. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, and I believe Isaiah said. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel, to bring glad tidings of good things. Somebody say good things. Because with God on our side and through it all, we will be found standing. As I finish up, nay in all these things, you better tell, start to tell the devil nay. He talking too much to somebody, but you might want to just step back and say, no, nay. Mm -mm. 
Mm -mm. Nay. The Bible says nay. Nay. You don't have to give him a whole dissertation. Paul didn't do that. He just said nay. Obviously, the devil had been talking to the man of God. But Paul said no. Nay. It's a three-letter word, but it's got power. With the Holy Ghost. Somebody said with the Holy Ghost. He said nay in all these things. You brought strip tribulation. You brought distress, but I told it nay. You brought, you brought persecution, but I told it nay. You brought condemnation, but I told it nay. You tried to separate me, but I told it nay. You brought distress, but I told it nay. You brought unemployment, but I told it nay. You tried to make me lose everything I had, but I told it nay. You tried to take away my dignity, but I told it nay. You took away family members, but I told it nay. You separated me from amongst my brethren, amongst my kindred. You brought me out into a land that I knew not of as Abraham, but I told the enemy nay. I'm more than a conqueror. For I am persuaded that neither death It's been all around me for some years now, but I said nay. No life. Life is life. But sometimes you have to look at it and say nay. You're not going to bring me down. Not today, life. I tell you nay. He says no angels. You know the enemy has angels too. But I got a word for him. It's called nay. There's principalities, and they're all around. But guess what? I got a word for them tonight. It's called nay. Nor powers. Somebody say nor powers. Got a word for them tonight. It's called nay. Nor things present. What's present in your life tonight? But I got a word for it. It's called nay. It says, nor things to come. Guess what? Things are going to come. But if they're not of God, guess what? I got a word for them tonight. It's called nay. Nor height. If it's not of God, I got a word for it tonight. It's called nay. Nor death. If it's not brought by the Spirit, if the death is not going deeper in God, I got a word for it. It's called nay nor any other creature. If the creature didn't come of God, I got a word for it. It's called nay. Shall be able to separate us, somebody said me, from the love of God. Anything that's going to separate you from the love of God, I got a word for it. It's called nay. Which is in Christ Jesus. Because everything I have is in Christ Jesus. Everything I am is in Christ Jesus. Everything I want to be is in Christ Jesus. Our Lord tonight as you stand to your feet. Everything I got. The song says I'm yours Lord. Everything I am. Everything I got. Everything I have. Everything I'm not. I'm yours Lord. Said, so try me now and see. See if I can be completely yours. Because with God on our side, and through it all, height, say nay. Depth, say nay. Principalities, I say nay. Powers that are not of God, I say nay. Through it all, we're going to be found standing. Amen? Let's look unto the Father.